As I mentioned in the introduction, while people may listen to music on all kinds of systems, from earbuds to headphones to speakers of all sizes, when it comes to mixing, the consensus is that mixing on a good pair of dedicated studio monitors is the preferred approach. A key goal in mixing is to ensure that the mix will travel well. That means it'll sound good on all sorts of playback systems. And mixing through speakers, rather than headphones, is considered the best way to achieve this. There are technical reasons for this, having to do with how our stereophonic hearing works. The experience of listening to stereo sound reproduction in headphones is significantly different than listening in speakers. In headphone listening, the left ear receives sound only from the left ear cup, and the right ear only from the right ear cup, as the concept of stereo playback intends, ideally. But when listening to speakers, the left ear receives sound not only from the left speaker, but from the right speaker, slightly delayed, and vice versa. The right ear hears sound from the right speaker, but also from the left speaker, again slightly delayed. This aspect of listening in speakers is referred to as interaural crosstalk. This crosstalk in speaker monitoring slightly smears the embedded subconscious timing clues that help provide depth and clarity in stereophonic reproduction. Without the crosstalk, headphones can offer more detail, especially in busy mixes with lots of subtle background elements, and a greater sense of depth, enhancing qualities like ambience and reverb when present in the mix. Now, for casual listening, this may be great, but for mixing, this enhanced sense of detail will give a false sense of how the mix will sound when played back on speakers. In fact, when a mix done on headphones is heard over speakers, significant clarity may be lost, and this is problematic when the goal is a mix that sounds good on all playback systems. Mixing on headphones can also give a different sense of stereo placement when panning, and a different sense of the low-frequency content in the mix, additional aspects that often won't translate well to speaker playback. Despite the limitations of mixing on speakers, crosstalk, room issues, and the like, mixes done on speakers generally translate better to headphone listening than the other way around. So the usual approach is to mix on a good set of studio monitors and then check that mix on other studio monitors and headphones, making adjustments to accommodate the inevitable differences between different speakers and speakers versus headphones to ensure that the mix works well on all the reference systems available. But most of the key decision-making for the mix will be done on the main pair of studio monitors, and these speakers should be dedicated studio monitors, not hi-fi speakers pressed into service for studio use. Many hi-fi speakers, even some of the better ones, are designed to make music sound fuller, brighter, and more immediately appealing. The sound is often somewhat hyped. They'll deliberately pump up the low end, or push the highs for some extra sparkle, to make for a more exciting listening experience. But from mixing, it's important that the sound is as neutral as possible, a mostly flat frequency response providing an accurate representation of what the mix actually sounds like. If a mix is too boomy or too peaky, then the monitors should reveal that. That's the whole point. They're not there to provide an enjoyable listening experience. They're a tool to be utilized for critical listening to warn the engineer and mixer when something is not in good balance and needs to be adjusted. A hyped speaker will give a false picture of what a mix really sounds like, and especially what it'll sound like on other playback systems, making it likely that mix may end up only sounding good on the system it was mixed on. In the past, some engineers preferred to mix on consumer speakers, reasoning that they'd be a good representation of what other listeners might be listening on. But with the wide range of playback systems in use nowadays, mixing on a neutral pair of studio monitors is a more reliable way to create a mix that will travel well, sounding good on all sorts of different playback systems. But of course, even if the choice of speakers is limited to dedicated studio monitors, there's still a wide variety of options. While studio monitors are designed to sound neutral, there's no such thing as a truly flat response. Different monitors will have subtle but distinct differences in overall tonal balance, and different types of monitors will vary in the way they interact with the room in actual use. So it's important to match the monitor to the room and to the musical application. The next video will be a brief technical overview of how speakers work.